So let's bring in the Shadow Minister for Social Services, Michael Suka. You heard what Justine Elliott said there, describing the criticism and the concerns of Pat Hill and others as disingenuous and that the problems have been there for a lot longer than just the removal of the card. What do you say to that? Well, I think it's outrageous, Kieran, that a minister would attack local communities in this way who are crying out. Uh, these are local communities, Kieran, who told us uh, when Labor foreshadowed that they would abolish the cashless debit card, that this would have devastating consequences on their communities. We now see, following the abolition of the cashless debit card, uh, that tsunami of alcohol and drugs and dysfunction and violence now impacting those communities. The last thing the Labor government should be doing is criticising the people who are now in those communities and suffering and dealing with the consequences of their very scandalous decision to abolish the cashless debit card. Uh, we warned them in the parliament, uh, I warned them very strongly, uh, that if you abolish the cashless debit card, you will unleash alcohol, drugs and violence uh, into these communities. It's exactly what's happened. Uh, the only decent course of action now from the government is to reverse its position, uh, as we've seen in the Northern Territory, reverse its position and reinstate uh, the compulsory cashless debit card, which we know did not solve every problem, but it certainly meant that these communities, like the ones you've described, haven't been dealing with the dysfunction that they're now seeing uh, in a really rampant fashion. Yeah, well, I've got those comments from the 2nd of November that you suggested. Scrapping the CDC makes a, a bad situation worse. Now, the opposition leader was in Laverton and Leonora this week. Did he receive direct evidence that the removal of the cashless debit card has caused alcohol abuse and worse? Well, we've seen it not just in WA, Kieran. We've seen it in Sejuna. We're now seeing reports out of sites in Queensland as well that had the cashless debit card. So it's not a phenomenon that's just Western Australian. Uh, in fact, uh, Ellen Wynette in The Australian wrote a couple of weekends ago about uh, the increased uh, dysfunction that they were seeing in Sejuna in South Australia. So uh, what is common amongst all of these communities that previously had a cashless debit card is when you remove the card, you unleash alcohol, drugs and violence into those communities. It makes a bad situation worse, as I said. And as I also said in the parliament and have repeated many times, Kieran, you don't need to be a genius. You don't need to be a rocket scientist to know if you put more drugs, more alcohol into vulnerable communities, the outcomes for the community and particularly for women and children is worse. We see uh, out of WA now uh, uh, reports of even greater neglect of children, uh, lower uh, school participation. Um, again, I don't think you needed to be an expert in the field to know you unleash the alcohol, uh, as Labor has done, that these will be the consequences. And I think the only decent thing for Labor to do now is to admit that they got it wrong, uh, admit that uh, they have caused this and work really quickly to reverse it by reinstating the compulsory cashless debit card. Now, when you look at the response to the crime wave in Alice Springs, the Prime Minister went there, it was an emergency, there's no doubt, and the ban's reinstated. This, though, this area is a direct result of this government's policies as opposed to the alcohol and crime wave in Alice Springs. What specifically needs to happen, other than what you said there about reinstating the cashless debit card, to stop the, uh, the alcohol abuse and the, well, the devastation that we're seeing across many of these towns and centres? Well, let's start by listening to the community leaders. So rather than Justine Elliott attacking a local mayor who is cleaning up after the Labor government and dealing with the mess they've created, they should be listening to those communities who are saying that removal of the cashless debit card has hurt them. And let's be frank here, and you raise Alice Springs. I mean, the federal Labor government have taken the problem, problems that we've seen in Alice Springs and taken them national by abolishing the cashless debit card. The same Labor ideology that led to a Labor territory government removing alcohol bans is the precise ideology we are now seeing that federal Labor has taken nationally. 
and that is uh, to take the approach that uh, allowing more drugs onto the street is somehow empowering communities. It's quite the opposite, Kieran. So, um, you know, I think most people would would have seen that the, uh, the the Prime Minister was forced into action in Alice Springs because of the disgrace that we saw there that was a direct outcome of a Labor government decision. We are, as you say, are seeing the exact same thing in former cashless debit card sites around the country. Uh, the only decent thing to do as a first step is to reinstate the CDC, admit they got it wrong, and then once that occurs, working with communities, listening to communities, just like the mayor that you quoted, no, don't attack those communities, don't question their motives, because those are the people who are cleaning up after the Labor Party right now. They're the ones who are dealing with the dysfunction, the violence uh, uh, in their communities. And I think uh, after re-establishing the CDC, the government needs to work with them, listen to them, rather than attacking them for just mm. calling out what is self-evident. What do you say to the argument by Justine Elliott and the government that there was alcohol abuse and violence in these various communities before the card was made voluntary? Sure, but it's now orders of magnitude worse. And you don't need to trust me, Kieran. Your viewers don't need to trust the opposition. The people in the community are saying it is orders of magnitude worse. And again, you don't need to be a genius. You unleash more alcohol onto the streets, you're going to see much more dysfunction. So sure, um, the, the situations may not have been perfect previously, but you know, as a, an example in Sejuna, you know, we had examples in Sejuna really of uh, the, a thriving tourist sector recovering, uh, tourism sector recovering. Uh, we saw uh, the dysfunction that had been there previously reduced massively. And then just by coincidence, when the CDC is abolished, it all comes back with a vengeance and is arguably uh, ten times worse. I mean, we saw an example where the Social Services Minister, Amanda Rishworth, uh, ordered a private taxpayer-funded jet to fly her out of Sejuna because of the violence that was prevalent on the streets there. And we've, uh, we've even heard about that in Senate estimates. Uh, so the Minister's not willing to stay in a town that's suffering that kind of violence and dysfunction. But there's an expectation that women and children have to live in that um, community. I think it's a scandal, Kieran. I think the sooner Labor admits they made a mistake, put their hand up and say they made a genuine mistake and fix this, the better. And if they do want to fix it, the opposition will support them all the way. A couple of quick ones before you go. The Aston by-election. Some concern among parliamentary colleagues that members, local um, party members, did not get a say in the selection process. Uh, are you happy with the outcome and can you hold on to that seat? Well, look, the, the membership of the party are represented by our administrative committee who chose uh, the outstanding candidate, Rashina Campbell. So I think the party is uh, very enthusiastic about our candidate in Aston and very pleased with someone who's going to be a great champion for that community. As the electorate neighbouring Aston, I have a real interest in it and uh, have a lot to do with the Aston community as well. And I can say uh, with Rashina Campbell, uh, she is going to work day and night to earn their trust between now and uh, election day. It's always hard. By-elections are always unpredictable, but I, I, feel, I feel some comfort uh, that uh, we've got an outstanding candidate. And I think you know, we're seeing even this week with uh, the, the government's plans uh, that they have, in a haphazard way, uh, released in relation to another broken promise on superannuation. I think with that issue and, and many other broken promises that uh, the electors of Aston uh, are seeing uh, the government for what it is, and it presented itself in one way before the election and has done something quite different since. And, you know, as mortgage belt seats in the outer suburbs of Melbourne, they are suffering the full brunt of a number of those broken promises, uh, including the uh, broken promises on cheaper energy, the broken promises on cheaper mortgages. Uh, and I think with an outstanding candidate in Rashina Campbell, she'll be able to 
uh, make that case to the people and I'm confident that uh, she'll earn their trust.